We are in Buffalo, a city in the United States of America, when on the evening of August 7, 1881, George Smith, a worker at the Brush Electric Light, was electrocuted while trying to sabotage an electrical switchboard of the company that had just fired him for drunkenness. The news goes around the city and reaches the ears of Alfred Porter Southwick, a steamboat engineer, dentist, and inventor, who suddenly had a brilliant idea, namely to use electricity as a capital punishment, as an alternative to hanging, now considered too barbaric a practice. Southwick began studying the effects of electric current by electrocuting hundreds of stray dogs, thus discovering that death occurred from immediate cardiac arrest. His ideas thus ended up in scientific journals in 1882 and 1883. At that point, Southwich tried to make this discovery applicable to humans, coming to create a new method of capital execution, which took the name of the electric chair. The idea of using a chair probably came from Southwick's job as a dentist, used to have patients sit in a kind of dental chair during his visits. When in 1886 the governor of the state of New York set up a commission with the task of finding a more humane and civilized alternative to hanging, Southwick's idea was taken into consideration. Three years later, on January 1, 1889, the use of the electric chair as a capital punishment became law. However, some technical aspects remain to be defined, in particular, the type of current to be used, the voltage and the duration of the electric shocks. The War of the Currents and the Electric Chair At this point, the story of the electric chair mixes with the War of the Currents, a 19th century commercial competition for control of the then-growing world market for electricity. War that saw on one side Thomas Edison, supporter of direct current, and on the other Nikola Tesla together with George Westinghouse, supporters of alternating current. Edison tried in every way to demonstrate the danger of alternating current and therefore to associate it with an instrument of death, such as the electric chair. He then began conducting experiments in his own laboratory in New Jersey with electrical engineer Harold Pitney Brown. By electrocuting animals larger than a human being, for example a horse, Edison and Brown were able to demonstrate to members of the press and the chairman of the commission set up for the death penalty that alternating current was perfect for the electric chair. The tests concluded that the electric chair would have worked through two electrodes, placed one on the head and one on the spinal column of the condemned, in order to administer a discharge of alternating current at a voltage between 1000 and 1500. Edison was able to find three AC generators, which had been dismantled, to associate Westinghouse's equipment with an instrument of death. William Kembler was the perfect guinea pig to usher in the electric chair when he was found guilty of axing his wife to death. Twenty-five witnesses, including doctors and journalists, gathered in a room in the basement of a prison, participate in the execution of Kemmler, which turned out to be a macabre spectacle. A 1,000-volt discharge for 17 seconds was not enough to cause his death. Kemmler, still alive, waited agonizingly for the generator to recharge to receive a second 2,000-volt discharge. The entire execution lasted eight minutes and proved to be a total failure, but despite this, supporters proclaimed it a huge success, a triumph of science and humanity over barbarism and brutality. Southwick also stood up at the end of the execution clapping his hands and said, This is the culmination of ten years' work and study. We live in a higher civilization. A closer look, however, reveals that the invention of the electric chair was not motivated by a desire to provide the condemned with a quick and painless death, but by the desire of one major electric company to discredit another. Thanks to Edison's activism, the electric chair became the prevalent method of execution in 26 states of the United States of America, thus replacing hanging. But how does the electric chair work in detail? Before execution, the head and legs of the condemned are shaved to reduce resistance to electricity. At this point, he is taken to the execution chamber and tied to the chair with leather straps that cross his chest, groin, legs, and arms. 
The chair is generally made from a non-conductive material, preferably wood. Even if the name could be misleading, it is not the structure of the chair that conducts electricity. Subsequently, copper electrodes are placed on the body of the condemned, one on the calf, and one on the scalp, which generally has the shape of a helmet. A sponge soaked in a saline solution is first placed between each electrode and the prisoner's skin to improve electrical conductivity. At this point, the body of the condemned man becomes a perfect conductor to circulate the current from the head to the calves. The condemned to death often wears a diaper as the electric shocks cause loss of control of bodily functions. Finally, he is blindfolded or hooded and the countdown begins. The electrodes are connected to an alternating current generator operated by means of a special handle by the executioner, who as soon as he receives the order, administers a deadly electric shock to the prisoner. At this point, the doctors wait a few minutes for the body to cool down and then check if the condemned man's heart is still beating. If a heartbeat is still detected, another electric shock is administered. This process continues until the death of the prisoner. How does the electric chair kill? Typically, the protocol provides for the administration of two electric shocks. The first is about 2000 2500 volts and is designed precisely to destroy the functions of the brain and central nervous system, causing brain death and loss of consciousness in a 240th of a second. Electrocution causes complete paralysis of every muscle in the body, which remains contracted during the passage of the current. The second discharge is about 500-1000 volts and damages the internal organs and causes the definitive interruption of the electrical activity of the heart. The death of the prisoner then takes place from respiratory paralysis and cardiac arrest. During electrocution, the human body reaches a body temperature of about 140 to 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which causes burns all over the body, up to the carbonization of the tissues in the points of contact between the electrodes and the skin. There were cases where the head of the condemned person caught fire, filling the execution chamber with smoke. The powerful electric discharges cause the eyeballs to pop out and the condemned to lose bodily functions who may lose blood, vomit, and defecate. Witnesses liken the sound of the execution to frying bacon and recall the nauseating smell of burnt flesh that invades the death chamber. Following the autopsy, it was found that in most cases the brains of the condemned appear to be cooked. Is the electric chair painless? There are many doubts about what the prisoner feels before dying, in particular, if the first shock of electricity instantly extinguishes the prisoner's conscience. According to some doctors, the condemned feel that they are burned to death, while according to others, the electric shocks immediately destroy brain function and the ability to feel pain. Testimony and post-mortem examinations suggest that execution by electric chair is often painful, thus violating the Eighth Amendment to the United States Constitution, which prohibits the infliction of cruel and unusual punishments. Even the electric chair was the protagonist of numerous failed attempts, in which the condemned man died only after several minutes of suffering. The malfunctions were attributed to the corroded metal helmet, the non-wet sponge and obsolete electrical components, which reduced the power of the electric shock to a level that did not cause the immediate death of the condemned person, but a slow and painful agony. To date, the electric chair has been increasingly replaced by lethal injection, an execution method that involves administering a cocktail of drugs into the veins of the condemned person. To find out how it happens in detail, I leave you the video I made above.